Okay. Okay, so let's look at an interesting method which uses discrete logs and it's the public key encryption method of El Gamo. And it was created by Tahir El Gamo in 1985. And we'll see that its application is now interesting in a world of homomorphic encryption. So before we start, let's actually have a look at what public key encryption actually is. So with public key encryption, the main methods that we have are RSA, elliptic curve, and discrete logs. And the El Gamo method uses the discrete log method. So basically, how public key encryption works is that Alice has a private key and a public key. Anyone can have our public key, but only she should have our private key. When we want to encrypt something, when Bob wants to encrypt something for Alice, then he'll take her public key and encrypt it, and then Alice will use her private key to decrypt. So that allows us to be able to create encryption. The other method that we use with public key encryption is to prove that Alice signed a message. So with this, we might have a message, we take a hash of it, and then we use our private key to be able to sign that message. This produces the values of R and S, which are the signature that proves that Alice has signed the message. Bob then takes Alice's public key and, and then proves the signature from there. The third method is where we use <coughs> discrete logs to be able to uh, perform a key exchange. And the method we often use is with uh, the Diffie-Hellman method. So to give you an outline of that, Alice generates A, Bob generates B, and Alice takes G to the power of A, mod of a P value. This becomes a public value, sends that over. Bob does the same and takes G to the power of B mod P. And then in the end, they end up with the same shared key value, which should be this value. So there's a few things going on in here that I'll just explain. P is a prime number, a large prime number. In the case of discrete logs, this is typically 1024 bits, 2048, or even 4096 bits long. These operations here perform our logarithm operations. So with that, John Napier defined if we have a to the power of b to the power a to the power, g to the power of a to the power of b, that becomes g to the power of a b. And if we have g to the power of a, g to the power of, times g to the power of b, that becomes g a plus b. So these are known as John Napier's logarithm laws. The one thing that we bring in with public key encryption is because we want to we want to create what's called a finite field. We constrain our values with this mod p operation, which is the remainder of a division by p, the prime number. So in all of our operations here, or most of them, we will do a mod p operation. And the great thing with this is if we use mod p, all our mathematical calculations will work out. So we can do mod p any time 
and all our mathematical operations will still work. Okay, so that's an outline of public key encryption, signatures, and key exchange, all using these public key encryption methods. But let's have a look at how we can encrypt using LGAMO. So for this, we use discrete logs. Discrete logs, we have these types of uh, operations. I'll show you later how we convert these into elliptic curve, but for just now, we'll look at discrete log methods. So initially, we start off with a private key value. Let's call it x. It will be somewhere between 0 and p minus 1 for our value that we have for our private key value. Then we create a public key, which is g, the generator value, to the power of x mod p. So we agree, Bob and Alice agree on a g value, and also they agree on a p value. A g value, typical 2 or 5 that we have, this is a 250, this could be 1,000 to 24,000 uh, bits, so we're going to end up with a very large value here. And we do this mod p operation there. Okay, so when the conversation starts, we might negotiate a G and a P value, or they might have it pre-programmed already. So that's our uh, private key, our, that's our secret key, and that's our public key. Now we take a message that we want to send to Alice, and we'll use Alice's public key to be able to encrypt the message from Bob to Alice. So we take the message and we convert it into an integer value. We then take a random nonce value of k. So k is a random value and it doesn't matter what that value is, it should all just disappear eventually. We then encrypt by taking an a value which is g to the power of k mod p and a b value which is the public key to the power of the random nonce value multiplied by the message. And hopefully it's not possible to be able to determine the message from both the values of A and, and B. So that's then sent, out, sent over to Alice and she will now decrypt it. And it's decrypted by taking B divided by A to the power of X, which is her private key, and that is then mod p. And that should give us the result. This operation here, where we see the divide here, is a special operation. And basically, it's a to the power of x inverse mod p. We define it as this value, inverted mod p and it's an inverse mod operation. So we don't divide, we create the inverse mod of this value. We take A, Alice takes A, raise it to the power of B, X, and then takes inverse mod P to compute. Then we multiply that value by B. So we don't divide, we multiply, but we create the inverse mod. So let's check that this actually does work. So B value, B value is Y to the K, M divided by A, which is G to the power of K, to the power of X mod P. And that becomes Y is G to the power of X. There. G to the power of K, X divided by g to power because of the rules of logs. Uh, we have this, so that becomes kx, and then that becomes g to the power of kx, m, g 
equal to the power of kx. So as you can see, we can cancel these out and we end up with a message. Okay, so that's how the LGAMO method works. And unfortunately, uh, the value of P has become quite large. So it's not efficient as compared to an elliptic curve method. So I'll show you now how you convert from elliptic curve from discrete log into an elliptic curve method. So just to give you a background, so with elliptic curves you might have a curve that has this equation ax plus b mod and there we go, we have our we have our p mod p in there. If we just ignored the mod p, we'd end up with a curve that looked a bit like this. And the way that we normally do it is that we have a point and then we do a point addition. So we might have g1 and g2, we end up with another point g3, which is on the elliptic curve. That's an addition. We also have a multiplication operation where if we take, say, uh, x times g2, we end up with another point on the curve and this is multiplication. Basically it's g added x times to give us this and we often use this as our public key where the x value becomes our private key. To convert from a, the, a discrete log problem we go from g to the power of x in an ellipse in an elliptic curve world, that becomes g x times g, where g is a base point or a point on the curve. We also have g to the power of x, g to the power of y. In an elliptic curve world, this becomes a point addition. So we take an uh, and, and x an exponent and it becomes multiplication and we take a multiplication and it becomes an addition. So we'll convert this into uh, an elliptic curve form and we'll do L gamma with elliptic curve. Okay so we'll start off with our private key as we did before of x. This time it's much smaller because the prime number that we use with inside uh, our uh, uh, elliptic curve is much smaller. Uh, one that we use is 2 to the power of uh, 255 minus 19, 256 bits. Uh, this is used in curve 25519. It's a much smaller prime number than, than these ones here. So it's much easier to compute. Then we'll work out our public key, which is x, g. g is the base point on the curve, and it's well known and well defined in there. We then create our message, and we have our random nonce value. That's fine. So now we'll take a. So a, we take this form and we'll convert it to this one. So it becomes k times g. To p and then b becomes k y and our multiplication becomes an add so then we have an add operation in there okay so this is a point on the curve this is also a point on the on the curve uh, because the y is a public key so what we do is we map the value of m onto a point on the curve and we have a point addition. And it shouldn't be possible to be able to determine the message from a and b here because of the random nonce that we're actually using. It shouldn't be possible to find that value out if it's a completely random value. So when Alice receives it, she has our, pr our private key Bob has her public key. She will take B, yeah, and then rather than a divide becomes an add, uh, sorry, rather than a multiply becomes an add, 
a divide becomes a take away. So we'll take away, and then that becomes x a here. And that is then the message back uh, decrypted. So we'll try that out. So that becomes ky plus m minus x kg. And the y becomes xg plus m minus x k g and hopefully you should see that that and that will cancel out and we'll end up with the message okay so we've taken a discrete log problem and converted it into an elliptic curve problem so now let's look at how we create a signature. So with a signature, uh, we have Alice and Bob. And then we take Alice's private key, take the message and create a hash. And then we apply that onto the hash to create an R and an S value. And then uh, Bob will take Alice's public key and then check the hash compared to the message. So for this, we create our R and our S value. So R is equal to G to the power of K nonce value again to create the r value and s is equal to k minus one the inverse of the random value we've created times the hash of the message minus alice's uh, private key times r and we also have mod p minus one it's a bit different but it's required later on that we have p minus 1. So again, this is the inverse mod of k uh, for p minus 1. This is the hash of the message converted to an integer value minus x times r will give us the r and the s value. Then Bob will receive two values. We'll receive the values of an R, R and S and the message. He will take the hash of the message and work out two values V1 and V2. V1 is equal to Y to the power of R and R to the power of S mod P and he will take the hash of the message and just G to that power mod P and then, hopefully, if these two values are the same, then the signature checks out. But we'll check that that is the case. So V1 is equal to Y, which is G to the power of X, to the power of R, times R to the power of S, which is K minus 1 H of m minus mx mod p minus 1. I'll just leave it off, but I can assure you that because this is a mod p here, overall, this works out. Okay, so then that becomes g to the power of that. r is g to the power of k to the power of this whole thing here. Let's write it all out again. And then because that comes in and multiplies together, that becomes g to the power of i. g to the power of k times k minus 1 is 1. So then that just becomes that. And then we can bring these all together. g to the power of that plus h of m minus gr. And we should end up with that mod p 
which should be the same, hopefully, as this value here. So if these two values check out, then everything is working uh, well. Okay, so I've shown you how to create encryption, how to convert to elliptic curve, and then how to create a signature. In modern times, we convert this into an elliptic curve format and create elliptic curve DSA digital signature algorithm. It's roughly the same method as this, but converted into an elliptic curve uh, method. So l gamma encryption has been useful in creating these digital sig uh, signatures. But let's look at an interesting area related to homomorphic encryption. And this is where the l gamma method is coming back into fashion because of some features that it, that it actually has. So with this, what we want to be able to do is to take encrypted values, A and B, and then we're going to have an operation. So the operation could be anything. It could be add, subtract, divide and multiply. If possible, what we want to produce is that that becomes that. So we might want an addition in here. So when we take the two encrypted values, we end up with an encrypted value of A plus B. So when we decrypt the value, we'll end up with A plus B. And this is homomorphic encryption where we can actually, we can, in, we can process encrypted values in a mathematical way and end up with the, uh, the correct result in the end. Okay, so with L gamma, we can perform a multiplication uh, operation. We can also do add and subtract, uh, but uh, fundamentally it supports multiplication of homomorphic encryption values. And we define this as partial homomorphic encryption because it performs one, it doesn't perform all of the mathematical operations, but it can, it can do uh, at least one. Okay, so let's have our encrypted cipher. So in the first case, we have a K1, which gives us A1. And then in the next case, we'll take the public key of Alice, K1, and we have our first value. So we want to do M1 and M2, and we want to multiply them together to create our homomorphic encryption. So for the second value, we will have another random nonce, and we will create same public key, K2, and we'll have message two uh, here just as we did uh, over over here for our A and the B value. Now, to perform the homomorphic encryption, we multiply these, val these values together. So we take the A1 and the A2 and multiply them. So that becomes that. And we'll take the B values and we'll multiply those together. So then that becomes K1, M1, Y, K, Two, M2, which should be one there. And then what we'll do is we'll perform our decryption, B over A to the X. B value is this value here, so it's Y, K1, M1, Y, K2, M2, divided by A, which is G, K1, G, K2, to the power of x. So then that becomes y k1, y k2, m1, m2, divided by k x, k1, g, 
x cubed 2. And we'll come over here now. So that's g to the power of x, k1, and g to the power of x, k2, m1, m2, divided by that, and that. And I hopefully you should see what we've got there, is that these two values, and these two values will cancel out, and we end up with the multiplication of the two values. So in this way we can encrypt our values m1 and m2, multiply the a and the b values together and we can decrypt them in the same way and we end up with m1 times m2 as a result. And it's this feature that allows us to implement L gamma encryption with inside uh, homomorphic encryption. Okay, thank you.